Okay, our journey through the Italian Wars moves us to 1522, and here historically the French lose Milan. Uh, let me try to... Um, figure out... Okay, in 1521 the French lost most of the duchy under our commanding general here, Lautrec. Now he's got a W, which means he's wishy-washy or something. He's slow. Uh, whenever he gets an attack command, and we had this at the beginning in the first scenario as well with the Venetian leader, it costs an extra point to uh, move him for an attack. I gotta put my damn supply markers down, I forgot them. Um, I know the French don't have one at the beginning of the game, but I don't, I didn't find the rule for that, I just found a reference to it. Um, anyway, so this is the starting situation, and the French forces are basically up here with their allies, the Venetians, and we have, these are the Venetians that are there, and then the French force, and you can see there's some Swiss with us. And again, special rules for the interaction uh, with the different countries. Uh, we're going to be facing Imperial forces under Kelowna, who is actually in Milan, and he's the Capitan General here. We have a number of Imperial commanders with small forces spread out. Sforza here is coming in as a reinforcement. The French are going to get Giovanni and his uh, uh, black band or whatever. It's not the black band. It's the Negro. I don't know. Hey, essentially the same thing, but um, it's a mercenary company. It's got some special rules that I have to worry about. Uh, that I didn't see in here a reference to, but I know we're in the actual roles. Uh, the goal of the game is to essentially control all of these. Alessandria, 0710 down here. Uh, Novara, which we've seen a number of times. Vigalano, 2117. Up here, basically key cities along the route. Uh, Pavia, Como, thirty-eight twenty-two. Oh, it's gonna be up here. And Lodi, uh, Cremona, yeah. Drathona, 0716. Oh, let's jump around a little bit here. Somchino, 2341. Let's get way back here. That's it. Trezo da Ada, 3032. I don't think that's this. That's Trezo. That sounds like it's going to be in this is Ada. I guess that's it. It's just uh, not fully spelled out. Um, if the game continues to its end, just 16 turns, we're starting in March. Uh, this is turn four. That'll get us out of here into deep into May. Then we get victory points, and basically that's one victory point for each city that's owned and not besieged. If it's a town, if it's a city, you roll a die and divide by two. So you can't be sure how many victory points you're going to have. Uh, Milan itself isn't included in the victory points. Its location is so important uh, to the roads of this game that... I don't know. <laughs> uh, they say it's a better scenario balance not to force uh, 
get into play. But um, we have some APs coming in now. Here, here's where we got this star. The army has no LOC at start, um, which is, I think, kind of the problem I'm looking at now. There may be a reason for that, which is that the uh, supply source has to be along the uh, western side of the map. I'm guessing that's what we've got here. I don't remember where the... Here they are. Uh, secondary sides on the west. Yeah, see special rules for 0114. 0114 is particularly interesting to us. That's going to be... down here, I guess. And that's going to be heading into Genoa. And there's special reinforcements available over here to the French if they can kind of get hooked up down there. So there's a desirability to uh, getting force in that area. Um, Venetians have either Crema or east of Brescia. Crema is of course here and that is not under their control so I don't think they can have that as their supply source to begin with. So they have it here, but I'm not sure I'm actually in supply there either because, well, there's no forces. Uh, that's important. So here, the problem I think is, so let's say I had this. I don't see where I don't have a line of communications unless fortresses block it. But then again, if that's the case, there's no line of communication from here. And Crema is not in the list of French-controlled things, so we're going to have to start making up rules uh, <laughs> to try to resolve this situation. Um, the rules as written, the French have a line of communication. They can trace this. So, if it's not enemy forces, if it includes enemy aligned cities, then the Venetians do not have a line of communication. Unless I give them, you know, Crema and Tivoli and stuff like that. Now, here's the thing. Not aligned is different. So, I think what it is, is cities that are aligned against you, as opposed to just not aligned, are going to count um, against your line of communication. That's the only way this makes any sense. And in that case, the only Imperials are M, G, and R. Milan, this area here, and R, which is damned if I remember. Alright, let's look at the map. I'm running out of uh, electricity here on my camera. So I'm not going to be able to... R is going to be down here. Which means Crema could be a source. We'll go down there. Um, because it isn't aligned against us, so then we can grab our supplies. I've got to swap uh, batteries because I'm screwed here. And some of this stuff just isn't clearly handled in the rules. Um, but I'm sure, you know, if I asked online, at least in the ES thread, I'm not sure how much they pay attention to the games because I haven't seen any thumbs or anything on this. Uh, or maybe, you know, in some other way I could get this information. But as I mentioned to Hair Doctor, I'm not one to ask. Uh, among other things, I feel like games should have, you know, comprehensible and understandable rules. And <laughs> I feel that by exposing when they don't, in the full glory and making up rules and everything, uh, I make that point a little clearer than uh, so many reviewers. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I had a conversation and you have no idea, you know, uh, what degree of special servicing they were getting because of it. Certainly, the designers of games can't, as was suggested, uh, spend 15 minutes on Skype explaining how the game is supposed to be played. And if they have to, they've failed in the basic uh, assumption. This overall is not that bad. 
Uh, but here we found something where I believe the rules are directly contradicted. Um, or stated in such a way that if you follow them um, word by word, which I've felt that I have to do in many cases, because, uh, for example, sieges don't make sense to me terribly, but the word by word description, I'm willing to live with it. It's a concession. I don't accept it completely. Same with some of the main combat stuff. I don't accept it completely, but I don't see an easy way to fix it uh, in my own mind. Anyway, what do we have here? We have numerous Capitano Generals. Okay, let's get this. Borario, which is 4049. That's going to be way out here somewhere. I don't know where 40 is. 40's way up here. Forty. It's got to be up here. It's got to be this. But this looks like barren. I can't read. Maybe if I zoom in with the camera, I can. That's thirty-nine, forty-nine. This has to be forty, forty-nine, whatever. It looks like barren to me, but. And it's spelled differently over here. I don't know. Uh, for the French. What do you mean, and possibly 0114? Okay, I did not see this in the rule, in the special rules down here. The only thing I see is here. Um, it doesn't seem. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, so this I think is just a special case. There are some French forces and uh, points back there, so I'm going to have to pick something off the west side of the map, and I don't really know where to pick because I haven't thought too much about the circumstances of the game. Obviously, you know, this is the best, quickest route, but there's a lot of roadblocks on the way. And on the other hand, Clearing this, this, and this gets me through. Alternatively, down here, I'm going to put it here. I think I have my best chance of getting through there. Ugh. Who knows? Okay, but I will not be getting any AP on the first turn with the French, and I'll be getting them with other people. Like I said, we have some reinforcements that are coming in. The Swiss are very sensitive. All right, the French cannot enter any hex of the Papal States. Uh, Captain uh, Trevulzio and his Venetian units may never enter a hex of the Duchy of Milano west of the Adda. Forces of different nationalities in the same coalition can uh, stack together if there's a Capitan General, but there's, uh, there's rules on this somewhere. Uh, only Lautrec La can be Capitan General of a multinational French coalition, which means all my Swiss would have to be under uh, von Stein on his own in that case. Um, more? Venetian combat units may be subordinated only to Trevulzio, and he can command them only. No other units, I guess. Swiss can command Swiss combat units only. Uh, but I think Swiss units can be commanded by others, seeing as that's not specified. Like I said, you've got to follow the, role, the uh, instructions absolutely by the word, or else it doesn't. you start getting into problems in this one, but then we see, hey, you still do get into problems when you do. Uh, apart from the limits above, all combat units can be subordinate to Capitan General of different nationality. Special French reinforcements. I have to have a line of communication from something to this. And if I manage that, 
um, then I get some extra action points or admin points or whatever three extra admin points over here and I also get some replacement points looks like four French uh, infantry reinforcements to a unit that can trace that um, that command line of communication okay then there's a rule for for Venetian automatic retreat so if orders are issued and you give something other than standard garrison to the Venetian force the French player rolls a die. If he rolls greater than a four, he's fine. But if he doesn't, the Venetians get a retreat order automatically. They must retreat in the ensuing activation phase, and they have to keep running until they reach Bergamo, uh, Brescia, or Crema, or the edge of the map uh, supply source. Milan. If the Imperials ever leave Milan unoccupied, the city reverts to French possession. Basically, there's French troops inside Sforza's castle in here. So there's a chance of a siege within a siege. But they're not represented as anything other than this threat that Milan will be captured if it's left empty. Right now, we have the big uh, Imperial army garrison here. By the way, the Imperials have a pretty impressive army. Um, we have uh, people like De Leva here, uh, Pescara, a couple of generals with stars, some good command opportunities here. Uh, the French, well, Giovanni adds to it, but uh, Bayard is really our only really good person, although we do have some siege ability. I don't remember what an A is. I'll have to look those up. So much to look up here. Yeah, I, I ought to know. I looked up the W because I didn't realize that, but now i got to look up the A. I don't think it's on an easy cheat sheet, but maybe it is. Artillery. It gets to fire again and again. Or something like that. Where are we now? Okay. Uh, if Travolzio is eliminated, the entire Venetian force disappears. We have our alignment that I talked about. And then we have some units that are, or some cities that are, are initially pro French. Notably, the Venetian cities and ter home territory is not pro French. Uh, that's important because, well, I don't know why. <laughs> it's not that important. It makes it, you know, it, it doesn't really affect anything because it's not aligned so you can trace supply through it. Um, but it means the fortresses don't make good retreating locations if there's a major attack coming back. Um, anyway, we'll get started on this tomorrow, I guess. Okay, so now that we start to actually play, this is kind of weird because it starts on an economic phase and again playing by the rules as written as anything else these all are going to get cleared out as soon as I, I make my rolls for points um let's take a look at the points because i am kind of this is going to be kind of a weird <coughs> situation I think this whole whole battle is kind of weird in the sense that the anti-French are really as red as they were in other scenarios they change the die on them uh, but in, in the sense that I think the French have to kind of fight their way through back to their supply source and then work from there and the Venetians are going to be staying back here uh, but the goals are spread all over the place and I wish I had uh, I may put some little markers down to indicate them because I can't remember where the hell they are and they should be kind of important right okay so let's open up with this uh, the French get nothing and can get nothing the Venetians have a base of two And they have about 10 hexes, it looks like.
Let me get a good number for them. But all the commands are blown. Now nobody had any maneuver commands. They all had commands that basically cost them nothing, so I guess that's not a big deal. And the Imperials also have two... I don't know where the hell their headquarters is, though. Did I forget to put them on the map? Oh, no. It's way up here. One, two, I'm at 15 here, and I'm thinking, I'm not sure I understand if you can go, if you can trace a line of communication through a zone. So that's something. Looks like it does not affect that. And the line of communications rules itself says through an enemy force. If I recall correctly. into but not through an enemy zone of control. Okay, well, <coughs> um, obviously you can't. So I can't take this road, so I don't remember. I lost count. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, if I'm going that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Twenty nine. Looks like thirty seven hexes. And I'm looking at two points. The Imperials are gonna have a hard time doing anything. I'll say that much. They lose their two, which is the most they could lose. They can't lose any off here. And then we'll try to get the zoom back in place. See, I don't know what happens because the screen tells me it's at one time zoom, but it obviously isn't, and then it jumps back. So it's more than just the mechanical side of things. And uh, I'll look, try to figure out what orders I need to give. Okay, so the positioning of the units in this scenario, and the positioning of the victory sections, and I've dropped some little markers here, has led to some interesting thinking in terms of what to do. The first big choice, the French have to go first, so they have to make their declarations as to orders first. First big choice is, hey, what about Lautrec? Do I want to keep them together? I need to get them over to this side of the board. It means a big march. It means a big march going by Kelowna here, which is scary, but okay. So what I decided is, uh, well, one thing is in the rules, it's not clear who commands the Swiss, but I think, so there's no special rules for the Swiss having like free points in this one or anything like that. And he is not a Capitano General, so I'm just putting him as, hey, he's French. I guess I could assign him to the, um, to the Venetian side of things equally well. Uh, but I feel like the focus of my activity is going to be on the French side, so I'm going to take him with me. And I have to spend French points for him if he's doing French things, I guess. I'm just making this shit up. Uh, but somebody should be spending points for him. And there's no... I don't remember a special rule. I did not see a special rule um, about the uh, about the Swiss here at all. Even though, like, they're kind of... In the, in the write-up, they're talking about leaving if... You know, the French don't do something. Um, so I did split them off. And there's a problem with this. I could have further split up Lautrec's force. That would reduce my attrition. That's the reason I'm sp splitting into, into units. The Swiss have to stay under his command. Whether or not he's under Lautrec is the only question. Um, I gave them both maneuver commands. 
so the problem with splitting your forces up is it costs more activity points. And also there's the, hey, uh, you know, if I actually do split up, I'll be walking by an army that's possibly going to be able to take us apart one at a time. But maybe I can avoid them if, because I don't have a line of communication right now to protect or anything. I'm trying to run to get to one. Uh, so maybe I can avoid them if I'm clever, if they end up having attack orders. Uh, so I didn't want to split the French further up. And, you know, this is basically a singular force here. Um, I also obviously don't want to give Lautrec attack orders because he has to pay more for them, if I can remember that. Uh, over on the Imperial side, though, I'm spread all over Hell and Creation, but I kind of want to be in most of those areas. So I actually left Le De Leva here in Garrison. I was iffy about this because I would like a mobile force to protect back here. Um, but it cost me a point to, to create that. You know, I think it's worth it. So I'm, I'm going to actually spend a point on keeping Deleva mobile. I think I can do something useful with him in that condition. Um, if nothing moves my way, I can move up to get over to uh, whatever that is. Oh, I've got to take... Oh, no, Como's... Uh, that's Imperial controlled. This is French controlled. And it's not even a city. What the hell? I gotta look that up. That doesn't even need a control marker as far as I understand. I mean, maybe it does, but it doesn't serve much purpose. You walk through it, it changes control. And it's not of any importance to the scenario. Um, so uh, what I did activate, though, was Visconti because I want to get him forward. Now, granted, he's protecting an area that's important to the French, and they may want to end up down there eventually, but I thought it was worth a point to try to move, try to put a threat over on this area here. And of course, I do need to activate Kelowna, but I also need to protect Milan, so I detached Adorno, I believe, uh, in Garrison, and he's in the same hex here. And Kelowna, I, pay, I spent for a maneuver order. I did not go for the attack order because I just can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to catch these guys. Uh, and that's going to become part... Remember, once you're in attack order, uh, the next season, it's going to be hard to continue the attack. Uh, maybe devastatingly hard to the extent you don't even want to try. I find it kind of disturbing that uh, troop quality matters for it. And that's cool. The... the a little letter, the reliability, not quality. But uh, command doesn't have much effect on it. I think a bonus marker gives you uh, a bonus on it, but that's about it. And there aren't a lot of those. Okay. Of course, I can put the most unreliable troops under Pascara here. Swap those around. Um, so, uh, what I'm looking to do, and this is kind of impressive to me for the era, because most games don't handle this kind of thing, is I'm looking to plant myself where the French are going to have trouble getting around me with Kelowna, but not be prepared for battle. Now, that's on this turn. Next turn, I can spend an extra action point if I want, uh, you know, if I'm coming close to contact with the French, because notice it only costs me one extra, um, right? What does it cost? No, it's going to cost me two extra, so I'm going to actually lose a point if I shift to attack, and I kind of expect to shift to attack. <sighs> yeah, let's just let's just pay it out right now. The problem with all this is, of course, I'm spending a lot of points, and running out of points is bad in this system. What is my expected gain later on? It goes up a little bit, so I, I'm going to have enough to operate with, maybe. But I've got this long supply line, and it's going to really suck if I'm out of points. Uh, <laughs> oh, for the French, or for the uh, uh, Venetians, I'm hoarding points. I'm not in garrison here. I can't be stand, I, and I have to pay a point. So I threw myself into retreat, which doesn't cost me anything, and I can fall back to one of my fortresses. Uh, 
I can't fall back to Como, but I could fall back to here, which will be helpful. I gotta look that sucker up though. Alright. Changed my mind. I'm just too low on Imperial Point, so I took the point back from Deleva. He's gonna be sitting in garrison here. And we're ready to rock now. Um, I looked this up. This is indeed French controlled. I don't know what else to do with it. And um, we'll just start with the activations here. Got to make a good choice on those first ones. And I'm having a lot of trouble with this. What do the French want to get moving first? What do they want to indicate first? Von Stein has a good... Uh, value on him so he's appealing to get moving uh, so I think I'm gonna trigger von Stein as my French action and I do that what do I want to do uh, with the Imperials unfortunately what I don't really want to do is I don't want to trigger Kelowna he needs to be available for reaction Deleva is very good so I'm gonna trigger him to entrench essentially and to interfere perhaps with von Stein. And we do the normal roll off. We get a lousy roll for von, uh, for von Stein, which means he's at negative two. Oh, uh, we'll let him go, basically. I realize I'm cheating. Deleva does not have a four initiative. He has a zero because he's in garrison. I'm not gonna back up and fix things. Uh, the Swiss should have been able to win there as against Visconti, but what the hell. Um, But I am going to re-roll a Trex because that's, that just happened. And I rolled a tie, so it would be a re-roll anyway. Uh, so the French win, they're going to hit La Trek with, uh, with, with Visconti with this. So Visconti has, or actually we'll hit the Leva. Um, the Leva took this, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's our situation. And now... The French have to pick another one. Uh, we'll take another zero up here. We don't really care, but we wouldn't have had enough points to even entrench with this. Uh, zero to minus two. It uh, looks like we're hit here too. These static forces are not good. The French should actually be triggering the uh, Trevino here because he's got the retreat orders. That gives him a plus one to his initiative, which is awesome. So I think we're going to pick that next. That puts him to a three. The Imperials will go with a two here. And we win the initiative. We don't really have a huge advantage here. Now here's the problem. If I let all the Imperials play out and actually do things, and I think as long as Kelowna hasn't moved, I don't have to worry about this. But if I let them all play out, then they can pass and force it so that I can't force march. I'm not sure I want to force march, but you can only do that if you're doing die roll activations. Uh, but I'm going to give Visconti the activation here. Now he has... Uh, do, 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 do. He has a movement allowance of five. He's able to move it all, so... Uh, let's get him in an admin march for one. I like to keep that on the board. I think I'm his mine. And we get him to here. And give him a little marker. We're running out of choices here. I feel like I have to roll Kelowna. And we're going to take Trevulso, try to open up a way for the French out of there. They're both at threes. Uh, we're going to force Kelowna to move. And that's. Oh, I don't have. Col no, I'm going to uh, be doing Adorno here. Okay, so Adorno is at minus three to his movement. That gives him like two. That's enough for him to upgrade. And we'll have to put a little one marker on Adorno. He's probably, oh, no, 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 no. Adorno is in garrison. Um, minus six. 
That's not enough to upgrade. <laughs> oh, I was hoping. Yeah, this is tricky. Keep forgetting about those garrisons. Well, if I want to move Kelowna, I gotta roll with him again. All right, I win this one. I'm gonna force the the Venetians to move now. I'll come back at a little while. Ah, well, they weren't able to cross this minor river <coughs> with what movement they have. So we're basically at the big big die roll here. And the hard part is tracking everything down and keeping everything in mind. You remember in the last scenario, I had the Swiss caught up against the edge of the board because I couldn't remember to bring them in. Um, so really, it's Lautrec versus. Uh, Kelowna and Latrec gets me a zero, Kelowna gets me a one. I'm gonna force Kelowna to move. Now here's the problem. There goes my second activation if the uh, if the Imperials don't want to go. Kelowna's move is pretty easy. One, two, Three plus a secondary bridge is four. And I think I'm going to stop there because I'm kind of sitting, you know, I've got some exposure up here, but I'm kind of sitting on the, um, on the junction of these roads, which will make it harder for uh, any kind of, any kind of movement away on that position. And now the Imperials have the choice. Do you want to take an attrition roll for a forced march that you might end up being forced to take to maybe hit the Swiss and then the French come in as reinforcements and wow, you know, that, this is becoming a lot uglier? Or do you want to just let Lautrec get one activation? I'm going to let Lautrec get an activation because I'm kind of scared. Uh, kind of scared of major battles, to tell you the truth, but I do want to see one in this game, um, I saw one in the uh, in the one scenario that kind of focuses on that. But uh, the last scenario, we didn't have one. The game was over before that. So we'll see what we can do with Latrec. He the problem is he gets full movement here. So one, uh, two, and this is French controlled. Just moving through is good enough if it matters. Three, four, five, I guess, down to here. <sighs> Give a little French control marker here. What this matters for is tracing, I guess. I can't trace through. Uh, the Imperials won't be able to trace through territory that's controlled by the French. And even if it's not a fortress, I guess. Um, and that means I'm having some trouble. I've got this path to get my army in supply. But if the Venetians can cut that, of course they have to keep this cut too, uh, they can cause some serious problems. Now, this location is important, this fortress here, would be important to cutting part of that line because the line could come down this way. Is there another path? Uh, we've also got this path. Even though the Venetian supply is there, it's not Venetian controlled. So we've got a couple of paths to cut there. And the Imperials may have to worry about establishing their own line of communication if they're, uh, if they're not careful here. And there's not going to be any force march. There's not going to be any attrition rolls or anything like that. We're just going to push on to the next turn, it looks like. It's getting a little tricky here because now, first of all, the weather turned to mud, which reduces everybody's movement allowance and has some combat effects on cab especially. Um, and now I've got the French Allied forces split here. And... That means even if Kelowna gets the jump, he can maybe go hit the Swiss, which is iffy, because that won't be a major battle. I won't be able to bring all my force to bear. Of course, my excess forces Cav, 
I'm not sure I really want to bring that to bear. On the other hand, the Swiss are all infantry and the French probably have some cavalry. Yeah, a little bit. And artillery, neither of which is terribly good in the mud. Um, and if I don't get the jump, well, I pick on the one that I can get a hit for. The other problem is, do I want to activate Deleva now because the French are cutting this way? He could you know, maybe serve as a counterweight for them. I think the answer to that is no. Uh, so I think we're going to stand as we are. And the French certainly don't want to spend more points at this point. And we also don't want to send anything into admin march here. We're too close to the enemy. Uh, we could come into contact at any time. Now, if Kelowna makes a move on the Swiss, the French might try to make a, a run for it. Or they might try to reinforce the Swiss and turn things into a bigger battle. Well now, the Swiss got the first activation and ran, and given that, Kelowna was able to get the next one, barely, and march against Lautrec. <coughs> I was mistaken about Lautrec being able to reinforce the Swiss. He doesn't have attack order, so he can't move next to Kelowna. Um, so, now Lautrec's in some trouble, because if he wants to get out of there, he faces pursuit, he faces making uh, a reduced he, he faces a reduced initiative for withdrawing it just there's a number of problems uh, in his his line so Kelowna has kind of successfully blocked this the problem is of course the Swiss are free and able to move but they're less they're very sensitive troops so uh, it's gonna be hard to really use them to too much effect I don't have any reinforcements I can bring into play because the Venetians are retreating. Uh, so I got some, some difficult choices here for the French. Okay, um, so I moved uh, Visconti and what drove him up through here, paying the ferry costs and everything. Uh, that was a move going up against Travols, but I'm kind of worried about one aspect here. Then Travols was able to force uh, Toniello to basically do nothing. Um, the issue I'm worried about is Lautrec here. So if he moves based on an initiative roll, he has to worry about the opposing initiative of Kelowna. He has to worry about a, a, a possible pursuit no matter what. But he has to worry about the initiative of uh, Kelowna uh, depleting his movement allowance. If he doesn't move if he waits until all the Imperials have gone and passed or whatever, he still takes that penalty to his initiative, but it doesn't seem to mean anything. He doesn't have a, a die roll against him or anything. Now, I guess, conceivably, you could say, well, forget the die roll, but we're still facing uh, the initiative modifier. This isn't in the rolls. But if that was the case, then I'd be facing a minus two to my movement. And that feels a little more appropriate. It doesn't feel like I should be able to get out of there uh, for free. But that's not stated in the rules. I think I'm going to modify uh, to play that way because I think that makes more sense. I'm starting to feel comfortable enough to start tweaking the rules as written a little bit. Yeah, especially since I found that I couldn't play with the rules as written for the lines of communication unless one decides that an empty fortress is a force or an empty city is a force because obviously the scenario is in uh, contradiction of those rules. So I feel like I have to start twisting that lens a little bit and adding stuff to the rules. Uh, is it necessary? No. Um, it could quite possibly be the designer's intent that Lautrec can get out of there fine, and I can almost make an argument for it, which is that, okay, look, you know, the, uh, the Imperial side has expended their effort for the turn, and they've passed, and they've decided they're not engaging in any sort of way. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. It makes more sense to me to say, yeah, there should still be that penalty for that um, initiative. Uh, being there, even if it's not expressed in the rules. So that's what I'm going to go with. Eventually the French ran out of activations. I tried to get an activation here to fortify and ended up getting no movement points because the penalty of Kelowna on a die roll 
ended up worse than well, worse than facing uh, Deleva alone. So Deleva and Adorno are now fortified, uh, fully entrenched in there. Now they already had the fortifications. I just like to build more if I can. Um, poor Travils was unable to come. Or Tra Travilsio, well, let's see, Tra Travilsio. I got an eye there. Uh, was unable to get across that stream again, <laughs> and. I do believe that the Spaniards are interested in launching an attack. However, they may not have to be the ones to launch it. They may be able to force the French to launch it. Remember, uh, the way conflict works is the guy with the higher initiative uh, gets to push the other guy into a battle. So I may put myself in a position that Lautrec can't uh, avoid, essentially. and just put him in an untenable position and he's forced to attack. And that's kind of cool. Uh, that would have counteracted Lautrec being able to build fortifications there, which is what he was trying to do because the pursuit table just looks ugly. So here we are, ready to do the major battle, Lautrec versus Colonna. And the first step, designate the attacking defending. Well, the Imperials are going to force the uh, French to attack. Not that it's really a big deal. Um, if it was a skirmish, it might matter. It doesn't matter so much, I think, in this case, except, well, I don't think it matters at all. And now the French have to make the first decision, hey, you know, are they going to spread out their command? Uh, and there's an advantage to doing so. I could get my artillery under one commander say Navarro, I could get uh, maybe my Cav under Bayard. However, that would make weaker forces and I'm not sure which makes the most sense at this point. And likewise for Kelowna, he also has room to spread out his force a little bit, but less value in doing so. Del Vasto here uh, it doesn't really add much to my combat capabilities. So I'm going to look a little bit. Uh, the artillery is an interesting option here for Navarro. Uh, however, if I don't give some infantry to support that artillery, I've got a problem. And I'm not sure, but I think I've got to put troops with Lautrec. But that may not be the case. He may be able to... Uh, to actually not be a field commander, which would fix most of my problems, actually. I'm going to assign Navarro the artillery and some infantry to defend him. Um, I could actually weaken that infantry. I must assign Bayard the cav, because he's got the impetuous, and he must pick the cav charge option. So that's two commanders who are definitely going to be attached. And now the question is, well, that cav alone is pretty weak. So yes, I can uh, detach uh, the infantry in order and, and just not have Lautrec in the battlefield. I see no reason to split up further. Uh, well, I see little reason. Things like coordinated attacks and chips, chits like that can help, but we're not uh, facing that kind of circumstance. Uh, for the Imperials, well, Pascara has a very small force, which he, uh, I believe, is forced to have under his command. He's got the battle chip. I want to give him a bigger force. Uh, I have not given him... I'll give him some of these quality infantry as well. And that's his third command. And we'll see Colonna... And Pescara over here. And I can take Kelowna off the board. I'll put his marker here just to remind me. So that's the division of force. Our next step is choosing the battle initiative chits. Now, I have to look at mud. That's one factor here because we have mud in play. 
that may affect some things. In combat, subtract one from artillery fire and cav charge. That's painful to the French. Um, and subtract one from any combat roll on the AST. Uh, unfortunately, I think all of that's going to be covered in the combat charts, but I'm not positive. But that's going to be kind of problematic. Nobody's getting any terrain advantage in this crap, though. So that'll help. Uh, so for my chits, I get what, a die roll divided by two, rounded up, plus the initiative of the Captain General. It doesn't look like I'm getting any bonus ones. So here it's two plus three. I'm gonna have five chits. Well, I can only actually use four. And here it's six plus two. The Captain General still, uh, I'm sorry, three plus two is five. So we're gonna be full up in terms of picks. I didn't see much advantage to throwing somebody in the vanguard. Uh, so we may not be doing that, we'll see. Okay, well, both people deployed to the main battle. Bayard took his charge, he also took a combined arms. Did not take a firepower, he's planning on being aggressive. Uh, Navarro has taken a firearms to help protect his artillery. And remember, his artillery can fire every round, so he's kind of got a neat combination there. Over here, Kelowna took a firearms. And I didn't have anything else that really looked appealing. I could have done for the formation. Um, the advantage of the Vanguard is you can launch cav attacks out of it without really a response from the main body. You could use artillery out of it. Those, those are kind of the edges that we saw from now, but it looks pretty minor. So I took a muster. If things go bad, I can get out. That's something the French don't have as an option. I don't know that, but... Uh, now, Pascara, his choice was between combined arms and charge. He wanted a firearms to help protect himself. Uh, the combined arms seems the better, especially in the mud. So we're going with that. We swivel over to the vanguard fight. There isn't a vanguard fight. There's a main body fight. And at this point... Navarro gets to launch his artillery fire. Now, he gets to fire this every time. Um, let's look at the specifics of it. Because I'm not sure if he gets to fire it if he's engaged, which is likely to happen. Uh, Okay. Engaging in melee loses the artillery chip, but you can fire defensively, I think, no matter what. So, find our artillery table, which of course, I don't think there's anything in here that's useful. I'll put this aside. the optional combat. Nothing useful. There we go. Alright, so now I add up my artillery and I only have four. And it's mud that gives me a minus one to the die roll. Am I firing in heath or hill? No. I have the A bonus, but that doesn't help me. That just gives me infinite ammo. So I've got a minus one, which kind of sucks. I roll a one, that gets me to a zero and avoids uh, losses at least. And this is out there, but it's not going to get removed. I get to keep firing it. So then the next thing is cav charges. and. Bayard has to declare a cav charge. I don't know what to attack. Um, 
Hmm. I'll have to think. I'll be back. Enemy cav is the more dangerous thing, so I'll go after Pescara. We put them near each other. And now we can launch waves at individual units. And we only have one wave of two strength points. I get to choose what I want to hit. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll hit his heavy cav, I think. And I'll be hitting with two strength points. It's mud, so I'm at minus one, which sucks. The opposing player, oh, I've got heavy calves, so I get to add my quality. Two, three, four, five. Wait, no, two at plus, there's a direable modifier, at uh, plus two, the mud versus my quality. Firearms are going to be played. That puts it to plus one. And... Hmm. I don't get anything special for being a perfect knight or anything like that. I don't remember what the advantages for that is. Yeah, gotta flip through. So, Impetuous doesn't give me any advantage. But Cavalier uh, allows me to ignore a fail into a pass result. But I cannot attack an enemy force with a retreat order. Not really an issue here. I was forced into this attack and they're not retreating. So what did I say? I said three minus two. Sounds like I have a plus one, yeah? I think so. So I get a five, that's a DCB and a squiggle. We're gonna get an elimination check. He's going to have to make a discipline check, and we don't have to worry about the breach. Okay, discipline check. Better be on the back of this. For... I think it's only the unit being charged, which was the heavy cap. Well, they have a quality of one. I do have a star, though. But it's not the Primo Capitano. Hmm. Interesting. I don't want to look that up because I thought it was in a major battle, whoever's in command of the little force. Otherwise, putting Bayard in command was not that valuable, but I had to. I had to give him the calf. Indeed, in the actual text of the rules, that's modified. So, where are we? We're at minus one. And I think that's it. But we're on the crappy one table. Two, one, we pass. And there's no effect to that. We do need to check for a leader loss, though. Which... Hmm. Oh, see also field engineers. 15.12. We have some of them in the battle. We have special units here. No militia in play. That only affects artillery fire. Uh, I could have added more artillery to the battle. Mm. I probably wanted to do that. Well, uh, so let's... Is that just in a siege? It's the besieging player. Yeah, that, that makes more sense. Okay. Uh, so I don't know how the Capitano has a kill check. That unfortunately is not easily discovered. It's going to be under the Capitano rolls, which are somewhere. <laughs> Have to flip through the rolls too many times, huh? Um. I think it's like on 11 or something, but elimination check. Uh, eliminated on a die roll less than or equal to two. 
Mm, we'll see if something happens to him. If his force just is. Okay, we got a we got an elimination, a successful elimination. So now what happens? His subordinate units become subordinate to other Capitani in the force, going to unemployed Capitani, minor Capitani, other subordinate Capitani. This is not available uh, during a major battle. Uh, so I think we go, we get assigned to something new. Pascara is gone. We'll give it to Davasco because he's the only unemployed guy. And I guess he'll get to keep the same capacity here. I don't remember where this was. Was it on the five? I think so. Weird. Okay, so Pescaro's dead. And we just kind of replace him here. And we'll figure out what to do with that. So that was a semi-effective cav charge. Now I could force this to engage. Uh, am I terribly interested in that? Might as well. I'll push him into the engage. That forces him into the attacking position. And... Then we declare engagements. And this is from highest initiative. Uh, which is going to be Kelowna. And he wants to launch an attack on Navarro with his artillery. And now we're going to actually resolve the fire. Uh, no. Uh, now we go down to combat resolution and we resolve the engagements. The attacker has the choices. That's the French in this case. Let's see how many rounds this lasts. <laughs> okay. So, we'll let Kelowna make the first attack. I don't think it's a big deal either way. Kelowna has two, six, 14. His firepower is not helping him here. 14 against the artillery. Now I'll use the firepower if I have to, let's see. 14 to seven, that's two to one. So I'm going to get a plus one die roll modifier. What's quality? Quality is one for these. And it looks like Kelowna is also one. So we'll be on the even table, non-affecting terrain. Okay, we're at plus one. No bonus stars. Mud drops to minus one. And I see infantry can't use firearms. Reduce the quality of the attacking force by one if the defending force plays firearms. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. So that drops us to the minus one on the non-affecting table, and we have a plus one to the die roll, and that's it. And a plus one is not good. Uh, we each take one and the attacker takes a discipline check. Kelowna. We'd rather take it on our lower quality stuff and our bigger units because they have the more chance of survival. Keep units in that. And now we're at quality one and two. Um, curious whether firearms affects that. I believe it does. It reduced the quality of the attacking force. So we're at zero and one. With a five. That means everything's getting a D. Now D is bad. The affected unit is demoralized. <laughs> during the commander activation phase, if already demoralized, eliminated during combat. If already demoralized, no effect. So that is the entirety of Colonna's force is demoralized. And he gets flung 
into the retreat or demoralized section. We have one more attack in the first round, which is Bayard versus Devasto. Devasto does not have a star, but Bayard does. So, Bayard has to attack. He has a strength of two and seven, but I do believe I want to play my combined arms. Let's see what that does. Might be able to play it on defense too. He also has it. Engaging core. You have to be the attacker to use it. Um, so that's going to make heavy infantry two. Oh, I'm sorry. Heavy uh, cavalry are worth 1.5. Infantry are worth two. Which means Baird gets three and 14. Gives him 17 strength points against Devasto, who has five, 10. That's not two to one. Maybe I don't want to play it. Sounds like a wise idea. Okay. And I think the strength is uh, apparent. The reason I don't want to play it is it doesn't really help unless I have the two to one. Okay. So, Baird. Well, now wait a minute. Baird would only be at nine. Let's make sure. To ten. So, yeah, that's a one to one. Okay. Um. Now. Yeah, the attacker's always on top. We're at zero for non-affecting terrain so far. Oh, no, we're at non-affecting terrain. Let's look at the quality. Baird's quality is a one with all that crappy infantry. Whereas, I do believe Devasto has a three quality, which means we're down on the minus two table. We have a bonus star though that gives us a plus one for the attacker, a minus one for the weather. No firearms here, do we? Oh wait, we played them, but we already used them. We don't get to use them again in the same combat round. We use them against the cav charge. Okay, so we're on the minus two at even, which does not sound good. We get a crappy roll of one. That's gonna be two hits uh, on Baird. He has to take one on each unit. And then he has a discipline check. Now his being a chevalier helps him with this. He's got three and one. He rolls a four. That's a fail and a pass. So the question is, do I want all my infantry to fail? I'm gonna use my star to turn that F into a pass. And I have Succeeded in holding out for one round. That means. Where's my die? Both sides have zero core in the MB? No. Has one side uh, fallen? Not yet, but we have a problem. Bayard might get supported by Navarro here. Um, but I'm not gonna see, without the chits for, what is it, coordinated attack or whatever, I'm not gonna see uh, a huge benefit from that. Rear guard commitment. It's not happening, so we're back up here. Take a little break. Okay, so here we are back on uh, the second main body fight. And, well, I had to remove the calf charge marker. That is a one shot. Um, but we can do artillery fire. And Navarro has as much of that as he likes. Well, unless he runs out of artillery, because it is possible for that to happen. So we got the minus one for mud. Uh, and... Is that all? That's it, I think. 
with four shots coming. And we get another good roll. This is a uh, check on Devasto. And Devasto's got one, twos, and threes. He rolls a three, which is going to fail for the one. So these guys have been hit. And uh, our next step. Uh, there's no cav charges. Uh, we can declare engagements. Uh, does it make sense for Navarro to declare an engagement? He only has six strength points. He's got low quality. I'd rather sit back here and just keep plugging away with the firing. So, we've got to resolve uh, Bayard's attack, though. Now, Devasto only has seven now. And Bayard could have 12, 13, not enough to get a 14, so I'm not going to uh, launch uh, my coordinated assault. I'm going to use up the last of the firearms, because that gives a bonus. Got a leader bonus that's plus one. It's mud that evens it out. And firearms reduces the quality of the attacker. So Bayard's down to a base of zero. And Devasto is still a three. So we're at minus three now at even. And we get a six, which is, well, nothing's much good for the attacker. He takes a casualty. Got to kind of hope the artillery finishes things off. Uh, Kelowna is not on the field, so I don't think he can even play the mustard shit anymore. Let me look that up and make sure, but I believe that's the case. Yeah, he's got to be in the vanguard and only after the completion. Yeah, I don't think I can use it. I think I've got a chance of winning the fight though, so we'll just keep going. And we come back around for the artillery fire. And what do we got? Four strength points. And up minus one for the rain, or for the mud. And we get a good check again. We're getting real lucky with the artillery. Disciplines two and three. Gotten better. A four, though, is a failure for the two. More of his forces are getting knocked out. He can't use this unless he's the one engaging. And he doesn't have that opportunity right now. Uh, and now we're not going to declare an attack here. I don't think. We actually outnumber him at this point, but there's not much value to it. What about with this? Five, six, eleven. Eleven to five gives us the two to one. That's a one point, a plus one bonus on the attack. That could work. Uh, we have a battle bonus. I forgot about that. That's a plus two bonus. Oh no, I didn't forget about it. Make a plus one for the mud. But our quality is still one to three. No firepower this time. So I'm at minus two with a plus one. We get a three. That's a one. And a disorder check. to see if there's any casualty checks for leaders. I feel like I'm missing something here. Um, 
have the disorder check, I have a bonus star that gives me a minus one to the die roll. I'm looking at a one and a three. A minus one, a three, that's uh, a fail. So these guys are breaking, but I'm still engaged with my quality cav. And that kind of changes the nature of the game, doesn't it? Let me hold off and check to see if there are supposed to be casualty checks after each round of engagement. It does not appear possible. So we continue with the artillery check, right? Uh, minus one on the four to five. Again? French might just pull this off. We only have a quality three unit. Uh, yeah, the, see, here's the problem. Um, Yo, oh, you can't get demoralized to get in combat. Oh, okay. So, we're high quality. Now, one of the things is it's possible for low quality units to just break the entire force. But here are four. We're holding off. If we can't lower that quality somehow, and I don't know how that can happen. Oh, we're not going to... We're not going to be able to break him. And do I want to engage now? I've got six to five. Could I get lucky? I'm at minus two. With really no bonuses. And now I don't think I can get lucky. So I'm going to go at one to five. Which puts me at minus two. Make it minus one, make it minus two. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, on the zero table. And I roll well, but not well enough. I have to roll higher than I can possibly roll. So I take a casualty, and it's going to be off of Bayard's calf. Put that there. I don't think I can regain it, but and that means Baird's been broken. Now we're at the next round. We have some interesting situations, but we open up with the artillery fire. And the only reason I'm getting all these artillery fires is he has the A ability. And this time he loses a gun. is his column as well. So now we're in this interesting situation where if neither side attacks the battle is going to be over. Both sides would retreat. So the French are not going to attack and we're going to come in. At this point we have five to six no biggie there. I forgot about his star. Oh no, he took a hit. Okay, five to six uh, means we're going to be on the zero affecting. And uh, no, I'm sorry. We're going to be on no modifier. The, we're on the plus two table as the attacker for force quality. We don't count the artillery, not unless it's alone, and then it only has one strength point. Uh, no leader bonus. Minus one for rain. Oh, and I'm using firepower, so I'm actually only on the plus one table. Okay, let's get that firepower shit out of there. That's been used twice now. Okay. So plus one and a minus one for rain is a three. The attacker takes a hit this time. I'm going to take it on this unit. Now, since the artillery didn't unit didn't attack, I didn't engage. Hence, the Imperials are over the line. I still get the fire. Yes, it's getting ugly. 
I need to roll a six to succeed, but that's okay. I'll go for it. No, I hit a one. And now we go back to the attack. Neither side can end this without a mustard chip. Uh, so we got four attacking six, no firepower this time. There's no bonuses for that, but I'm on the plus two table at minus one for the rain. And I net a one. The Venetians, or the uh, Imperials are really trying to make this a closer fight than it should be. <clears throat> Next round, the artillery. On a six, I can get something. I do not. I get a two. Ooh. Last time I probably shouldn't have lost one, I, I think, but I lose it now. Uh, and now the attack is two versus six, or sorry, three versus six. That gives me a minus one to the die roll, another minus one for rain. So I'm at minus two on the plus two table. I get a two, another hit. Another artillery roll. I don't have to take it, but I'm going to. It's a one in six either way. Two, that's bad. There goes a gun. At least I'm doing something right. I may not want to fire the last gun because I get a two quality unit defending in that case. But here, uh, I'm at minus two on the plus two table again. And this time we get a three. Both sides take a hit. Oh, you know what I've been forgetting is the damn discipline checks on the black. I've got a couple of them to make. Oops. Okay, we got an FF, which is, it would have lost two or a disorder. We'll give it a disorder. This was for last round. Uh, we're gonna say, this didn't happen, so. We're gonna say that Del Vasto has just lost. That means we're gonna get a pursuit out of this. That may be a rules addendum that I'm putting into play. Let me make sure that I am kind of cheating against the rules as written here, because it just feels like what should be the case. Uh, well, I'll take care of it before that. So the pursuit table is over here. Uh, we don't have a bonus star. We do not have Stradiots, whatever those are. Those are the light cav. Uh, there's no movement points spent to cancel it. It's just pursuing infantry. It looks to me like there are no modifiers. We don't get uh, an initiative modifier or anything like that. We roll a three, I-10. 10% of the pursuing undemoralized infantry SPs. Well, that sounds like one more hit. And I can take that on whatever I like. Which I may take that on the, the lowest quality, which is the heavy calf. And we have a path of retreat to do. <clears throat> All right, I gotta look this up anyway. What combat requires, okay. Where is pursuit covered in here? It moves its full movement allowance. Um, Paying terrain crossed is a normal movement. And I believe we get a retreat marker on Kelowna instead of the attack order, which makes it very difficult to shift what we have. I don't think we keep our previous attack. I'll have to look that up, maybe we do. Okay, so Kelowna takes Del Vaso back. These markers come off. Put them back in the pool. Colonna's coming out of here. And these are actually gone. Get rid of all of them. 
Should have been cleaned up earlier. Okay, full movement back. His full movement right now has been reduced. He's got a speed of four. And now I can halt there. Great. All right. And now I'll look to see what rules I violated. I'll come back, chat a little bit about that in the end of turn. So I think there's a consolidation of this force as well. I think there has to be. So as part of the main battle, there is this pursuit and recovery. Half the accumulated admin points of the pursued Capitano's army are transferred. Rounded up, I believe. Yay. That's looting. I had to take infantry, not the calf. A no move marker on the winning force to remind them they can't move during the next player turn. Huh. No move marker. Well, I don't know where those are. Let's put them back on one of these. That's the mark where the battle is. On the back of this. That's a disruption. Got attack finished. That might work. <laughs> okay. Um, but it can expend move, uh, movement points. It just can't move. And then I have to replace with a standard garrison. that's it I don't see any actual pursuit required although strangely somewhere ah uh, yeah if the retreating force couldn't go forward there's an advance and skirmish let's look at this I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any advance in a main battle. There's an advance in a skirmish. And that's it. Um, and yeah, coordination. This gets absorbed. Adorno. Comes in as a subordinate. As we bring him into play. And we can switch since we fell into retreat to a fortress into a garrison status, I believe. And that'll push us up here. Get a couple here. Do I have any attrition? Nobody's adjacent to anyone else, so I think my answer is no. And let us load this one up. 